Hello everyone, it's Jen here from After School Art Club. I hope you're well. Um, have you had a good week? I'm going to ask you that every week. Hope mums and dads have had a good week, had a coffee, had the chance to send, uh, send some emails um, and just have a break whilst your kids do some art. So uh, normally my third um, After School Art Club lesson, I look at Cubism and Pablo Picasso. Uh, Pablo Picasso is an artist who you've probably heard of but can anybody tell me what cubism is? So again, like normal, I will show you a few um, boards and then I'll set a task for you to do. So today, all you'll need is a piece of paper, um, pencil, some cardboard. If you've got some cardboard, mums and dads have ordered some stuff online and it's come in some packaging, you just need some cardboard just to cut out some shapes. So it'll just be cardboard, scissors, piece of paper, pen and pencil, paint if you've got it or it can just be colouring pens so it's totally up to you and if you don't have any cardboard that is also totally fine so first things first cubism anybody got any ideas what cubism is so i can show you and tell you about cubism so in 1906 two artists uh, pablo picasso and george brack um, started working together and they began to paint still life portraits uh, still life and portraits in a different way. So still life is where you um, you kind of set up an observation. So artists would uh, perhaps on a table um, uh, put a fruit bowl with some fruit and maybe some bottles or some jars and then basically they would draw what they see. And the same with portraits, you're looking to do a portrait, so do a picture of exactly how somebody looks. But these artists were um, trying to paint the pictures and draw the pictures slightly differently. So what they were doing in the in their paintings was showing several viewpoints in one picture. So um, the objects, perhaps on a face or perhaps the vases or the bottles or the fruit, were broken up into geometric shapes. And uh, this way of working became known as cubism. Now, this is a picture of Pablo Picasso, and he was a Spanish artist born in Malaga. Um, he was brilliant at drawing people and um, doing doodles, so just doing kind of quick sketches and quick kind of freehand um, art. So this is one of his famous pictures, if you can see that. This is of the weeping woman. And what I mean by um, how he's broken down um, aspects of the picture into different shapes is hopefully you can see here, he's done her nose kind of like the bit of a triangle kind of shape and then her mouth is quite like how he's drawn it is quite um, kind of harsh shapes and quite you know it's not soft it's quite um, you can imagine he's really pressed down quite hard and done quite jagged um, kind of movements with his pens and pencils so the interesting thing is is he's drawn her nose and her mouth as if she's kind of facing that way so the nose and the mouth there but yet the eyes you can kind of see um, straight on so he's like he's playing around with his picture and he's playing around with how you view things and how we see things and how we then portray them in a, an image so this lady is crying so he's used lots of blue um, lines as her tears and then her hat is kind of quite flat um, and again he's just used shapes you can kind of see the underneath of her hat but yet you can also see the top of her hat so he's just played around um, with the different angles of uh, her portrait. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do our own cubist uh, portrait. So just to show you a few more images of the pictures and paintings that cubist artists have done. And this is a really interesting one of a guitar. I hope you can see that. But the guitar is kind of just broken up. It looks as if it's a broken guitar. That's how he's um, painted it. And if you see here, the glass is on the table. But like the table is kind of facing down so it looks like the glass is falling off the table and that's kind of the fun with um, cubist paintings um, and I personally really like uh, Pablo Picasso as an artist he kind of pushed the boat out and um, and made people see things in different ways so the geometric shapes that they would use in their art um, would be things like circles squares triangles and here's some examples of uh, Picasso's style of um, art and the features and how he would draw them. So here are different kind of triangle shapes that he would represent as noses. And obviously he'd do the nostrils as circles. So he's almost not doing too much detail. He's making it just quite um, 
kind of basic but then with his colours he's making it really vibrant and actually it just kind of it just makes you really look at a pretty picture in a different way or a pretty face in a different way um his eyes you can see he used to do lots of kind of nice thick eyelashes sometimes the eyes would be closed um and then the lips again it would be quite um kind of sharp shapes to describe you know they're not it's not like softly drawn kind of pair of lips it's a really um you know like quite a hard uh, obvious fierce kind of shape when he's drawing um, and the ears again in lots of his paintings you can kind of see these uh, kind of half diamond shapes um, to represent ears so uh, basically you can have uh, fun in trying to draw your own portrait so um, I just thought I'd also tell you that Pablo Picasso was quite famous for different stages um, in his painting life there was a, um, a time known as the blue period and that was when he was feeling quite sad in his life so a lot of his paintings hopefully you can see that um were kind of represented in in dark blues and dark greens and then um later on he started to feel quite happy and this is known as the rose period and then you could tell that and that reflected in his paintings because they were all based on kind of pinks and reds and he was like warmer tones when he was doing his work so to start off with, normally in after school art club, I would give my students um, a piece of paper and I'd ask them to draw an oval shape to represent their face. So if they didn't want to do this, I already would have printouts. So I'm going to show you the easiest way to draw this, thinking about breaking up the picture, breaking up your uh, face into um, just shapes. So my lovely whiteboard again. If I was to draw an oval shape, I would, it's kind of like a long circle, like that. So thinking about Picasso's um, geometric shapes that he's used and some of the shapes I've shown you, I would perhaps draw a triangle for my nose and then maybe a really simple shaped eye and maybe some big eyelashes. And then here, I'm going to do one that kind of goes off the um, edge. So you can kind of be really playful with how you draw your um, portrait. Because there are kind of no wrongs or rights. Um, Picasso was actually quite famous for saying, um, every child is an artist. And I believe this is so true. You're all artists. We're all artists. It doesn't matter if things you think are wrong or right. It's all about confidence. It's all about... Um, the communication and what you want to tell in your story and who are we to judge whether it's good or bad it's kind of how you feel and what you want to represent and also um it's about practice if you want to get better at art just keep practicing just keep doodling just keep, you know i'd say don't chuck stuff away just just keep uh, refining like your skill so we can have fun today with this portrait i'm gonna do some big kind of lips and then I'm going to do a big nostril. And then for me, I'm going to do an oversized fringe. Let's do that like that. You can see that. And then in the background, let's do a little eye. I'm going to fill my uh, space on my paper with geometric shapes. So let's do that. And then I'm going to do a neck, a long neck. And then what else can I do? Let's do, oh. Let's do some big ears and maybe some earrings and then let's do that. So that's roughly my kind of crazy portrait of myself. Oh, I've not done my glasses. Let's do some oversized glasses. Right, like that. So if you want to get drawing, um, you could either look in a mirror if you wanted to, just to draw yourself. Or you could just have fun with drawing anyone if it doesn't have uh, if it's if it's not a portrait of yourself. So the next thing we're going to do is with your cardboard, if you have cardboard, would be to cut out some geometric shapes. So I've got a rectangle, a triangle. So I was thinking about kind of a nose for a triangle, and then I've got like kind of overly shaped front eye and another nose, and then like a circle. So that could go it could be a, a nostril on top of the nose like that. But I'm just thinking about shapes. And then I would ask you to have a bit of fun and layer the cardboard cutout shapes on top of your final picture. So as you can see, I've done like a rectangle front eye there. Um, and then I've just had fun with thinking about shapes. 
and then whether you have uh, just pens or some paint you can colour in your whole picture and I think think about using really vibrant colours um, and things can overlap I mean I think I painted this one but you can use your um, pens and yeah just have fun just have fun with creating shapes and I know it looks a bit silly but it's kind of a fun thing to do um, I don't think, well, it kind of looks like me, that one. That was before I was wearing glasses. So I hope you've enjoyed um, doing that task. Like I say, normally around the classroom, I'll have other tasks for the children to do. So one really good thing we can do is, I'm going to challenge you to try this. Pablo Picasso was quite famous for his doodles. That's an example of one of his doodles. So it's kind of quick freehand um, sketches that he would do. And often... He would do a doodle where he didn't l lift um, his pen off the paper. So he's drawn this horse and it's, it's harder than you think it is because naturally when you're going to draw another part of your picture, you take your pen off. So try and do some doodles without taking your pen off the paper. It's quite a fun little task to do. Here's another picture. He's done a separate eye, but you can see here he's incorporated the hair and the ear to draw this face. Now, once you've done that as well, another way to draw a cubist um, picture or to have fun, another little task that I set up, of, is have a go at drawing a picture and then cutting it up and trying to put it back together. So don't worry about it. It's a, it's, it's a, um, don't feel precious that you're going to, you know, cut up one of your pictures. But to create a kind of cubist look to rearrange and make something look very different I've drawn this fish and then I've cut it out and then I've cut it up and I've stuck it back together but I've stuck it back together in a different way and I think that looks quite a cool cubist fish if you want to take it a step further you could actually do a whole picture um, on a collage so here is an example of um, a cubist guitar so I've drawn a guitar and colored it in and then on another piece of paper and then I've cut it up as you can see and I've used a collage so I've used lots of layers of different textures to rebuild the picture so I've put some paper some newspaper just some colored paper and then I've used um, some pastels just to give it some more lines thinking about when we were doing our portrait of ourselves and I was just doing some kind of block lines um, of different geometric shapes I've done this in this picture as well so hopefully there are a lot of things for you to get on with today um, I hope you have fun enjoy I think next week I might do possibly might do a bit of um, collage and René Matisse or I might do a bit of surrealism so have a good week enjoy doing some art and I will see you soon thanks a lot bye